Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl and some really special news. I really want to create this video as my dream next car has officially just been announced. So it is the Porsche GT3. It's 2022. I know we're only at the beginning of this year, but the 2022 model has finally been announced. I've been waiting for this car for kind of ever. If you don't know, I currently drive a 2018 991.2 GTS. This is actually the exact model right here. Hopefully that stays up. And I've been eyeing an upgrade now for the past maybe year, year and a half. So I originally had the Taycan and there's just something about electric vehicles that doesn't do it for me. And I know that everyone in the tech YouTube space, that's obviously the space that I'm in, swears by Tesla. Everyone owns a Tesla. They're so deadly fast. There's just something to be said about having a stick shift, the third pedal, having the clutch, having a high revving engine, the sound of the car. It's essentially its soul. <laughs> And I just don't get that in a Tesla, even say the Taycan. That is why I have been eyeing the GT3. So they are sticking to a naturally aspirated engine. So it's a four liter, which screams all the way up to 9,000 RPM. And having a naturally aspirated car in this day and age is just becoming so much tougher. Emission controls, turbos are more efficient and just makes cars faster in general. And that electric camp will once again argue Tesla's, for example, even a Model 3 is quicker zero to 60 than this Porsche. Their new Model S Plaid Edition is something ridiculous, zero to 60 in 1.9, two seconds, which is kind of nuts. The torque, I think is over a thousand pound foot. It feels like you're just getting launched off a roller coaster. So I know a lot of spec heads will look at this car and say, you're spending way too much money, but it's for the driving experience. It's for having that six speed. It's for having that naturally aspirated engine and no one can convince me otherwise. They have the new configuration let us spec my dream car. And we'll start off first with the color. And it came out in this really interesting one. You can kind of see it over my shoulder. I've already got it as a wallpaper. It's called Shark Blue. And you can see it here on the model right now. So I do have the UK site up because the rest of the world is a little bit behind. I'm sure this will be available in North America. So it's a $2,500 pound. That's around $3,500 Canadian US option for a color. It is a flat paint option. So my current one is actually in crayon or it's called chalk here in Canada slash the US. I'm definitely thinking of going the shark blue. I know that they have a color called lava orange. That's technically what this model is. That isn't what it looks like in reality. I actually think it's a bit more salmon-y in person. It's a bit lighter. We all know that orange would be the dream, but Lava orange is not my favorite shade. I know that color is the toughest option. Curious what you guys think of the blue. There is the argument to just get the standard silver. Maybe I'd put some orange stripes on it, but having just, you know, it just doesn't seem special. And I feel like if I'm spending that kind of money, you wanna have something a bit more unique, something that pops out. So I'm gonna leave it on the shark blue. You can of course, for a free option, just get white, black, guards red, yellow. We're keeping it at shark blue. Now that we've got the color picked, you can really see how that accentuates some of the lines on the GT3. We can see some of the aggressive intakes. It actually has two intakes in the hood that are now split. So I'm a big fan of that. We've got the massive wheel arches and on the back, I think that's where the regular 992 looks a bit chunky. It's got a big booty. I feel like they've really toned it down and carved some really nice lines. So you've of course got the two intakes, the rear diffuser, which I think looks so much more aggressive and that iconic GT3 tailpipes right down the middle. And of course the new swan neck design Spoiler, that thing looks super cool. And I know that actually increases downforce of the car 50% more than the last gen. And you can actually tweak that manually to get up to 150%. That's if you're taking it to the racetrack, which you know I hope to do. I do typically track my car one to two times per year, depending how lucky I am to get out of the house. So this one will definitely be on the track here in Toronto, which is super cool. So for the wheel options, it is now a staggered set. So you've got both the 20 up front, 21 inches in the back, and I'm a fan of the silver wheels. I currently have black ones on my car and I swore to myself I would never buy black again. I feel like you lose all of the detail in the rim. You could get this option here where they're painted satin black. You get that beautiful blue pinstripe. There is an option to paint them in satin neodyme, which I think just looks gold. So I will just leave it at silver. I saved myself a thousand pounds. So that's always nice. 
The next kind of important part is the interior, and that's where GT3s or GT Porsche cars are kind of famous for. This is where you can get full on bucket seats that hug you when you drive. So standard, they come with the four way sport seats. If we want to add some buckets, you're tacking on 3,700 pounds. That is not cheap, but look how much better this looks. And if anyone that has ever driven in a track, you want seats that hug you, you are nice and compact. It isn't the comfiest drive on a day to day basis, but I think if you're getting a GT car, you have to get the sport buckets. The options for stitching, if I did get it in shark blue, I'd want to have the shark blue stitching inside. I do wish we had more leather options maybe to make it two-tone, maybe a gray dash, but maybe that will become more available once this car is actually more available and actually ready to purchase. So right now I will leave it at that option. So the blue stitching with the bucket seats, black interior. To the exterior options, this is where it gets tricky. I like to keep it very minimal and clean. You can get a lightweight carbon roof. 2,500 pounds, I don't think I'm gonna buy that. This is where it starts to get a bit ridiculous. You can get stickers, models, of doors in black, 147 pounds for a sticker. There is this cool motorsport decorative sticker in silver. So you get this nice line through the middle of the car. That looks kind of cool. Let's get that top down shot. It goes into the spoiler. It will match with the rims, but 300 pounds for a sticker. It's like 500 bucks. I'm gonna leave that sticker on. That's an extra five horsepower, why not? The rest of these are pretty much a no-go for me. Maybe I get the paint protection. It's another 200 bucks, but it is important to protect your paint. Let's get to the part where everyone wants to talk about. This is the drivetrain. So you have two options here. You have the seven speed PDK. So that's one of the quickest automatic shifters. They've actually changed the gear lever. So normally in 992s, it looks like that small little bronze shaver. They've actually copied a manual gear shifter, but now it's actually automatic. So when you're driving, you can still select your gears, or of course you have the little gear paddles on the steering wheel. Of course, you gotta get a six speed. I think that's an absolute no brainer. It's one of the biggest reasons why I'm a huge Porsche fan. They still have kept the old school analog gear shifter, call it old school, call it old tech, but there's almost no greater feeling than hitting the perfect shift, especially if you can get it up to 9,000 RPM, that thing will just scream. The Sport Chrono package, so that adds a little clock. It's essentially a glorified lap timer. You can see yeah, so, uh, you know, for, for non-Porsche fans, this kind of sits right in the middle of the dash and that will help keep track of your lap times. Front axle lift system. This is maybe something I'd consider because the GT3 sits so low. This actually increases the front axle by 30 mils. So when you are pulling out of driveways, when you're going on a bit of an incline, this will help prevent you scratching the bottom of your car. I will leave that checked off for now just to save some money but let's get on to lighting. And here maybe the only thing I would consider are the exclusive design taillights. And those are the clear taillights as opposed to red. So if I do select that, I'm wondering if it switches. Oh, that looks clean. On, you can see the red strip and now off. 590 pounds for a red delete. Comfort systems, I don't need park assist. I don't need traffic sign recognition. Hopefully I can see those myself. Home link, I will say no. Interior, I cannot get seat heating because that's only available if you have the regular sport seats. So if I'm going for the buckets, I can't get that. I will not get a fire extinguisher. I will hopefully not crash this car. The only thing I was really eyeing was the seat belts in the shark blue. So that will now match. For the rest of the interior, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I know you can get crazy with your Porsche options. So you can get air vents in leather. Air vents in leather with leather slots, a thousand pounds. Like who, who would buy that? Audio and communications, I'm not spending a thousand bucks to get a Bose system because I have the best Boxer 6 engine to listen to that revs up to 9,000, so that is my audio choice. Colors for stitching, like I said, you could have the orange stitching on the inside. Curious what you think the best color combo is. If I'm going shark blue on the outside, should I just keep the shark blue stitching on the inside or should I make it more like me? Should I get orange stitching? I don't think those two match. And I think that pretty much wraps up the options list. We're at a grand total of 131,906 pounds. We've got 8,000 pounds in options. So if we do that conversion, I think that's around 
175, 180. So obviously super pricey. We're in that Model S Plaid category. We are in the Taycan Turbo S category. I would take this 10 out of 10 times, no question, even though it's significantly slower. I just can only hope that my OG 991.2 can give me a pretty decent trade in value. So that's kind of my dream spec of the brand new 2022 GT3. Curious what you guys think. I know a lot of people will say you're an idiot. Grab a Tesla, you'd be stupid not to. I know that car choices end up being a personal opinion. So just really curious what you guys think about the GT3. Is it overkill? Am I buying a piece of tech that is just too old? Am I stuck in my six speed analog ways or am I kind of onto something? I know that I was just so stoked about this release. I just wanted to create a quick vid. So if you didn't enjoy it, sorry, you'll stay tuned for the next tech episodes, but I can guarantee I will have a launch or reveal of this once I finally get it in person. That probably won't be for another year because Canada slash North America takes a bit longer to get them in stock. Hoping that I'll get on some sort of wait list. So Porsche Center North Toronto, if you watch this, you know where to put me on and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.